What up y'all, it's T-Tar, and today we're going to be talking about another theory I have for Pokemon Legends ZA, which as you can see in the title, is that Zygarde is an artificial Pokemon. Now, I ended the last video telling y'all that a certain Pokemon looks like it might be artificial, and I was asking y'all to guess. I wanted y'all to think it would be something like Rayquaza, because I was linking this whole phenomenon to Pokemon that have Mega Evolutions, right? That they're like artificially, synthetically enhanced. Bro, this is a whole train of thought. If this is your first video, you're gonna be a bit lost, but pretty much it all stems from the idea that these new games might be the theme of what's natural versus what's artificial and that the big war that happened in the past in Kalos was this theme and AZ side was the natural and the enemy side was the artificial synthetic and you know when I was first talking about this war so of course as I think about this more and more my idea is developing so I have some changes to make to the story we've put forward which is that I was initially saying that when it was AZ side versus the opposing side that AZ side might have had Mega Evolution because that's what Kalos is about and the other side had the synthetic Pokemon but that doesn't exactly fit the theme of natural versus artificial right so what would make more sense is that AZ side had fully organic Pokemon no enhancements at all just raw Pokemon and the other side had both synthetic Pokemon and Mega Evolution and so that would kind of put them in the lead. So that's like the first layer to this. But the second thing I want to talk about is, so this theory about Zygarde being artificial, it stems from the first idea we were having, which is that this game could introduce an ABC trio to counterpart the XYZ trio, right? But we're going to take that away, right? Because I can't be stacking these assumptions as much fun as we're having. So let's say there isn't an ABC trio. Here's the theory. What if Xerneas, Veltil, and Zygarde are not a trio? And there is no trio. It's just Xerneas and Yveltal. There is no Zygarde. And there never was. And so all you have is this Pokemon that has mastery over life and can grant life. And this Pokemon that has the mastery over the opposite and can take it. And that's all that exists. It's just an X and Y duo. So yeah, I imagine Kalos in general worshipped these two Pokemon. And they were Pokemon held to high regard. Even though they were asleep most of the time. Because there were people there to witness that they were truly the gods of life and death. But that's all there is, just two of them. So that's the Kalos, that's our side of Kalos. Then the other side, they don't like this. Here's where something weird comes in. Zygarde. At a glance, Zygarde seems like the balance between life and death, right? You always do need balance. But are Xerneas and Evolto really such bad Pokemon? I mean, obviously, Evelto has this bad footnote to it because it's the death Pokemon. But I'm sure it's not something like life Xerneas has to fight Evelto constantly like a war between protecting life from death i'm pretty sure the purpose at least the way i want to believe it is xerneas and Yvelta just represent kind of the natural forces and they're just pokemon that have those powers but they're not ac actively involved in messing with stuff even though xerneas does grant life and all and Yvelta does take life they're not actively doing stuff and this is when we get into my theory right you see zygarde what if i told you zygarde had nothing to do with what xerneas and Yvelta really were it's its own thing entirely. Look at Zygarde, right? It's naturally able to counter Xerneas and Evolto's abilities. The way it looks, it's this serpent that mutates into different forms with hexagons. Think of something like this. Xerneas and Evolto exist as these forces of life and death. And what the war is really about is the rise of these synthetic people who they don't like that Xerneas and Evolto have these powers and are worshipped in Kalos that they invent, that they synthetically create the counter to them, their Achilles heel. They create Zygarde and order Pokemon because they want to take their fate into their own hands and they don't want to rely on Xerneas and Yvelto messing with stuff. Their ultimate synthetic creation, Zygarde, would be meant to counter and overpower Xerneas and Yvelto and warp the battlefield in their favor. And that's exactly what Zygarde is if you look at it. Why does it have the ability to counter Xerneas and Yvelto as if they need to be put in their place by the natural order of the universe? Do they really? So this is the real story of what happened, right? In the war 3,000 years ago, the true start to the war is the successful creation of Zygarde on the enemy side. It was us versus them, and we did not have Megas, they had synthetic Pokemon and Megas, and we were losing, especially if they had Zygarde on their side. And they're fighting to lead Kalos in a different direction, which is what Civil Wars are about, right? Two sides that have a different plan for the future. 
and we were losing to them. Somehow AZ pulled off what he did and left the battlefield and in some weird way he had his hands on Xerneas and Ivelto energy slash life force that he was able to get some machine from somewhere, grant his flow it back life and then use that machine to end the battlefield because they were losing. Because the enemy had Zygarde on their side, which was a natural counter to our side. You could even say, and this would be crazy to say, that we had Xerneas and Ivelto on our side during that war. The war that's shown in the X and Y story is very minimal. They didn't show us the true scale of the war. And if you imagine, right, if AZ somehow had to get his hands on Xerneas and Ivelto life force, and I'm painting this picture of like the natural gods of life and death versus these people who try to create their own to counter them, it makes sense that if they had Zygar on their side, which is such a cool thought, that we might have had Xerneas and Ivelto on their side. And maybe, you see, the idea I get with Zygar is that he warps the battlefield, distorts it, and inverts it in the sense of an inverse battle pretty much. So the moment they pull out Zygarde, Xerneas and Ivelto are useless. So something like in this battle, Xerneas and Ivelto are actually knocked out. They're done. And so that's why AZ had to use this alternative method to use their power, bring back Float, and then wipe everything out. But the idea is to just put to high regard the synthetic side of the war as the actual superior side. That AZ destroys all the technology when he does that. That would add an interesting layer on top of what AZ did blasting that weapon. AZ pretty much had to use the weapon to just for a moment overpower the perfect Zygarde creation they had on their side. Think, I, doesn't this sound amazing? Think about Zygarde. Its name, it has Zygote in it. This is all about cells, growing cells and all. It doesn't sound right at first to disassociate Zygarde from Xerneas and Ivelto as like the balance between life and death. But... If you force yourself to take him away from the picture, I can't see Zygarde looking anything but like some kind of synthetic artificial Pokemon. Like freaking Cell. He looks like he was grown in a lab, specifically to counter Xerneas and Ivelto. And you know, every time you see him, he's formed by cells. You see him in Sun and Moon and they have like this Zygarde core in a tube. You see, these are the hints Game Freak left us. They left the tube in Sun and Moon. They left Mewtwo having Megastones because he's a synthetic Pokemon. They're like leaving these clues of something synthetic that happened in Pokemon X and Y story in their past, in Kalos's past. I'm telling y'all, Zygarde is a synthetic Pokemon. And you see why I've told you this is because I want to take y'all back to something. The logo. Pokemon Legends ZA. The, it's Zygarde and AZ's clash. 3,000 years ago. This brings a second meaning to the title, and this is without introducing my weird idea of introducing a new ABC True of Legendary. I've so told you the story with only the Pokemon we have. Xerneas and Ivelto on our side, Zygarde on their side. The second meaning to the title is the ancient days when AZ defeated Zygarde at the end of the war using that weapon. And this game would tell us more about that war and that that is what actually happened. And then you think to the modern day, right? The war is over, Xerneas and Ivelto are sleeping, Zygarde, it breaks into pieces and it observes the ecosystem. It's like carrying out the purpose it was made for. Now, even though the people who made him are gone, it's still carrying out their heart of what they wanted for Kalos, which was something that would protect the ecosystem. Zygarde isn't the Pokemon that's bad, it was just made to be on their side and counter our life and death Pokemon. But now that everything's done, that's what you're left with, Zygarde just monitoring the ecosystem. And you gotta find how cool it is that because X and Y story was left unfinished, that you never got to see, first off, you never got to see AZ really talk about Xerneas and Ivelto. But at least we know he's interacted with them in some form because he had their energy when he made the weapon. But something you completely never get to see is AZ mention or say anything about Zygarde. There's like some interesting potential there. AZ's been wandering for 3,000 years. Zygarde was born 3,000 years ago. In a weird way, they are their ultimate enemies. Not that they would fight today if they met each other, but they did fight 3,000 years ago. Because both of them have a good heart at this point. But yeah, and that's also why when depicting the A portion of ZA in that title, they use the ultimate weapon. Because that was the true final clash. 
AZ and the Ultimate Weapon versus Zygarde, and that's what ends the war. Now, there's some crazy implications to this story I just told you, and I wanted to leave it a bit blank so y'all could have some fun thinking about it first, but that's what I wanted to tell y'all. That's my theory. Make sure I'll shank that like button. What do you think? Do y'all believe me? Do you think Zygarde could be this synthetic Pokemon, or do you think it's a natural Pokemon that balances life and death? The more I think about it, I can't escape this thought in my head that it is synthetic. Pretty much, Zygarde is monitoring the Earth and protecting it right now, but from our perspective, at one point, it was the bad Pokemon. And AZ probably knows it's still out there somewhere, even though, has he met it? Has he not met it? If he hasn't met it, that'd be really cool. Even if he has met it, it'd be cool. Wouldn't it be cool if this wandering man, at one point, he goes into the cave, checks up on Zygarde, and he keeps wandering? As if they are cool at the end of the day, now that the war is over. I don't know, man. I love these ideas. I'm going to keep telling y'all them. Make sure I shank that like button next. I'm either going to talk about what I left blank here or I'll talk about the starters. So I'll see y'all in the next one. Take care.